We're joined now by Dr. Marcy Bowers. She is a surgeon and one of the nation's leading experts on gender affirming health care. Also the president of the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, which sets global standards for care for doctors in the field. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Margaret, for having me. We've, you've heard our guests talk yes. about transgender issues in the political sense. We've now seen 21 different states pass laws restricting access. Um, and so I, I want to understand a little bit more about what that access actually looks like. You know, the governor of Utah was here and said there's an explosion in his state of interest. Are you seeing that as a doctor? Yes, I mean, there has been an increase in demand for services, but keep in mind, uh, trans identities have been with us since the antiquities. I mean, the time of the Bible and uh, in literature and art history, I mean, there's examples of people throughout. So experts feel that the incidence has actually never changed. And, but what we are seeing is more people feeling comfortable coming out. Mm -hmm. And so that explains the rise. So there's a spectrum here, though, from identity all the way to surgery. So how common is it with surgery um, for someone under the age of 18 to be able to access it? Uh, surgery really is not done uh, under the age of 18, except in severe cases, usually top surgery for transmasculine persons. And even that is rare. I think the estimates are something like uh, 57 uh, surgeries under the age of 18 were done for trans individuals. Uh, so the majority of people, though, that are that do identify as TGD or transgender diverse, uh, don't access even uh, medicine or surgery. It's just a feeling of uh, maleness and female femaleness that uh, that differs from their birth assigned gender. Mm -hmm. And uh, gender identity being diverse has lots of inputs, not just hormones, not just chromosomes, not assigned uh, gender, but, uh, but a variety of inputs. And, uh, and that reflects the, uh, the, the numbers. But they're, they're low, uh, and they'll always be low. The current estimates are about 0.6% of the population, which is about 1.6 million people. Mm -hmm. uh, might be as high as 2 or 3%. Um, but it'll never be much uh, more than that. Uh, the majority of people still identify and are very comfortable with their binary uh, assignments. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this is a, a vulnerable population uh, that deserves health care. So it deserves health care. There, there are other treatments as well, hormone therapies and the like. A lot of these laws that are recently becoming or taking hold are aimed at this young segment of the population. How much research is there into the effects of puberty blockers and hormone treatments of people in this age group? Right. Well, we have decades of experience with uh, with trans treatment overall, uh, and and that shows unequivocally that treatment is beneficial. But in this age group, we really we've only been treating uh, with uh, hormone blockers, uh, which is the point of real controversy that uh, that people are after uh, since the late 2000s. Uh, but in that time, there has been uh, research, especially from uh, groups in, uh, in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. but increasingly here as well, and experience with this, and this, the results are similar. We're seeing uh, certainly very high levels of satisfaction, improved self-esteem, reduced suicidality. Um, uh, so, uh, so they seem similar to what we've, we've already witnessed in adult populations. Um, but the controversy is that I think people feel like this number is increasing and it's going to like envelop their children and, and, uh, and spread like a contagion, which is just really a, a false narrative. Um, you know, there has been controversy regarding your particular group, which set some of these parameters because they removed age guidelines from the surgery recommendations. Why did you take the age guidelines out? Well, the point of that is that, first of all, the, the, what was uh, leaked apparently was the, the draft guidelines, which we were going to consider younger uh, age groupings. Uh, but but uh, the important point is that uh, care is individualized. And so uh, age isn't really the issue. Uh, generally, it's adulthood, and uh, except in severe cases. And, uh, you know, again, a draft guideline means it gets input from around the world uh, with available science that, that uh, provides input and consensus. So this is what the WPATH 
standards of care are, are all about. They're consensus and science-based guidelines. Because and uh, and I want to add, though, that, mm -hmm. uh, that you know some people say the science is settled. I never say the science is settled. I really feel like science is always evolving. Mm -hmm. Medicine is always looking for new input and new data. Um, but what we see is, is promising. And again, this very small subset of the population uh, is, is uh, worthy of that care, and it seems to be beneficial. So uh, one of the things that we heard on this program from the governor of Utah was that he felt that some of the organizations, like even the American Academy of Pediatrics, were too political on this issue. Um, what science are you looking at where you think the politics aren't interfering? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, what, what the uh, critics are looking for is what they call level one evidence. Now, level one evidence would require a systematic review of all uh, randomized controlled studies uh, in this area. And uh, if you look anywhere else in medicine, uh, about half of what we now accept as routine treatment in, in any field is not guided by level one evidence. Level one, take for example, uh, cancer treatment or right. cleft palate surgery, diabetes care, none of those have level one evidence. Uh, because uh, to do so, you would have to induce, uh, introduce a placebo, yeah. in other words, a non-treatment to that group. But can you imagine uh, offering someone who has cancer non-treatment? You're saying I mean, it would be unethical. There's a different benchmark you're saying is being applied here. Doctor, thank you for your explanations.